So my advice to all the viewers there, if you're doing CLP, if I can pass CLP in one go, so can everyone. Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Vera. So in today's episode, we have Vera here, who is a CLP graduate, to tell us on his uh, experience and insights on how it was for him. So as an introduction, could you tell us a brief overview on why did you want to do law in the first place and how do you go about it, pursuing a passion? I see, okay. Uh, coming up, I'll be very honest with you. Law was not my first passion or not my first goal in life. I actually wanted to become a doctor. Oh, yes. But unfortunately, uh, maths wasn't my forte. <laughs> you know, and my true calling in life, uh, I would like to think that it is to become a lawyer at the end. Mm -hmm. How did you decide that you wanted to be a lawyer then? Uh, I decided to be a lawyer simply because I realised that one of my main characteristics is good linguistic, mm -hmm. good advocacy skills, persuasion skills and mostly advocacy skills. To all those aspiring lawyers, I would say if you want to become a lawyer, mm -hmm. if you have these three characteristics, especially uh, advocacy, good linguistics, probably the most important skill or trait of all is being a hard worker. Mm. So if you're a hard worker, it doesn't matter if you fail your SPM or if you get a 1A for your SPM, you can still be a great lawyer. I, I know lawyers who got 1A for their SPM doing very well themselves today as well. Mm. Yeah, so don't, don't let those results hold you back. That's the good thing about the law. Mm. You, know, you start from scratch mm. and you can get to somewhere. At least provided that you did well, you know, from the start of your law journey. How, why did you choose, because as we all know, there is your CLP and there's BPTC. Why did you choose CLP over the other? Okay, uh, why I choose CLP over the other? Uh, coming, I would say that probably I'm not as lucky as many other people there. Because like, to do BPTC, as you all may know, it takes a lot of cost. Hmm. It involves travelling to the UK, it involves uh, you know, living expenses in the United Kingdom. So we Malaysians have to deal with the currency issues. So usually doing CLP is a more cost-effective route mm -hmm. to resort to. And, but to, to be clear, CLP is only applicable for foreign law graduates. So uh, University of Malaya, UIA, UITM, like or MMU doesn't require you to take CLP. Just to be clear on that. Yeah. Yes. Could you tell us more specifically on the course of CLP itself? Like, what were the how was the syllabus structured? How was the course structured itself? And how long was how long was it? And how much were the fees? Okay, sure. It's a very interesting question, you know, because a lot of people are one is always wondering about this. So there's, all, there's five subjects. The first subject procedure. is general paper, civil procedure, criminal procedure, professional practice, and also evidence. Oh, okay. So there's five subjects, but those five subjects have their own branches. Oh. So for example, uh, professional practice is bankruptcy. There's also uh, one day winding out of companies. There's also ethics and advocacy. So among all these subjects, the most useful one to you. If you want to be a civil litigator, uh -huh. would be definitely civil procedure and also uh, professional practice oh. and evidence. Mm -hmm. Criminal practice, unless you want to practice in, uh, as, as a criminal lawyer, then it wouldn't be too much of help for you. Lah. And also, uh, general paper is also useful for you to draft the statement of claim. Mm -hmm. So, then what about the cost structure? How is it? Uh, the cost structure. It's a very traditional uh, swallow everything out and regard, regard, regurgitate oh. the information out, the answers out. It doesn't really depend on you being smart. Mm -hmm. It really depends on how well you cope during on the exam day itself. Oh. Basically, your life depends on the three hours that you sit on the, on the day of the exam. You can study for the whole year or you can get a dean's list or you can get a, a lot of uh, recommendation from the lecturers, but if you got stomach ache on the day of the exam, it's going to fail. <laughs> so it, it's not different at all from the University of London style of examination where you try to study mm -hmm. and you try to apply in real life or real life exam questions. So the structure is very simple. You study every subject, maybe you can limit it to 
certain topics that you are comfortable with and hopefully you pass. Mm. Where did you study and how much was the cost? I, I first started my first year in KDU mm. and then I transferred my second year and third year at EDC. Oh. And then I did my CLP and BEC. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a good uh, rough on your rainbow view or overview of all the universities, all of them are good. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this for promotion, but if you're doing uh, LLB and CLP, then ADC and BAC is one of the best mm -hmm. top two that you should go to. Uh, you know, to prevent you from failing, lah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the cost fee. Um, I'm not from the university, so I'm not so sure uh, the the cost fee structure right now. But I can tell you from where I come from. University of London. It's around fifty thousand for the degree alone. Okay, so another CLP, the tuition fee of the universities would be around, uh, I would say around ten thousand to fifteen thousand, uh -huh. exclusive of the exam fee itself, which oh. is around five thousand. Keep things short. Fifty k for degree, twenty k for CLP. Oh, provided that you do not fail any of the papers and you pass everything in one go that you do not require to receive any exams. Speaking of that, you it was your first try first pass, right? Yes, uh, fortunately for me it was my first try first pass for everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is what I would like to you know encourage people uh, when you sit for the exam, try to do everything in one go and try to pass everything in one go and get a second upper or a first class degree. Because it's very important later on when you try to get jobs. Mm, that's that's really like interesting and like remarkable uh, because of the notorious passing rate and so on. Then can you tell us about how was it? How was your experience with CLP? Like reading it and with the exams. Okay, I have a very mixed feeling for CLP. Some people would say that there is a quota system. Uh -huh. uh, but personally, for me, I believe there isn't like any anymore like, You know so. It all depends on, like I said just now, how well you do in the exam itself, on the day of exam itself. It was very tense. For there's like around 1,500 candidates taking CLP on that one exam day. Uh -huh. So it is more intense than SPM. Everyone is sweating, you know, you can see tears, some people panicking before the exam, some people, you know, acting calm, and some people are really good, just go in and you know, YOLO and just do the exam. <laughs> so it's, it's very tense. But in the end, what separates you from a failing, from a failing perspective to a you know, successful candidate is what you did. What you did in the first, in the preparation stage. Whether have you studied enough, have you done your enough research, have you... Do you want it? How badly do you want to pass the exam? Mm. You know, I wanted to pass the exam very badly. Mm. So thankfully for me, it works in my day. So that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. How bad do you want it? You ask yourself, how bad do you want it to be? How, how bad do you want to be a lawyer? Very, very bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then, like, how long will the exam days? The exam takes a span of two weeks. And the last time I set for it is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the following week, uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Oh, it's a one day gap for me. Mm -hmm. It's very different from a degree where you know you have like probably contract law paper on you know first week of March and then suddenly a thought on the second week of March where you have enough buffer time to study. Mm. But for CLP I'm not so sure why it's structured that way. But you have only one day to buffer yourself. Mm. Right? And it's not impossible to pass. It's not impossible. Oh then speaking from that right like I just wanted to ask sectors to like was is it true like as you said, there's like on the first day itself, there was one point five k people there around. I there's this YouTuber called Kelly She also did a CLP. I saw a story. She said like, okay, on the first days maybe it's the same number as you. Then on the second day of the exams, there was one k. And on the fourth day, there was like seven hundred people. On the fourth day, there was just three hundred people. Is it true? Yeah. Okay. Shout first. First of all, shout out to Kelly Yo. So what and what she said is scarily true. <laughs> Because, uh, well, as I said just now, on the first day, for example, you would have general practice mm. and the third day of the week, you would have uh, criminal criminal law. So, uh, the difference here is the first day, 
people would probably buy a general paper and feel so bad about it you know, that they, they feel disheartened and then going to the second day, also the same case, and they thought that, okay, might as well just give up. Which to me personally, I think is a very bad practice to give up halfway because you never know. Mm. You know, just do your best, answer all the questions, and you will have a chance. Because you don't, you don't score a goal if you don't keep the ball. You know, you don't win the lottery if you don't buy a lottery ticket. Mm. So to me personally, it's never give up. You know, even even though it looks so bad on you, don't give up. Mm. And what can you say is true? You know, unfortunately, it's true. Uh, but then again, you know, why candidates are so, uh, why candidates are so disheartened is probably about the stigma. There's this one stigma that uh, CLP is hard, CLP is hard, CLP is hard. So when you keep thinking that CLP is hard, it really becomes hard, mm -hmm. even though it is not hard. So my advice to all the viewers there, if you're doing CLP, if I can pass CLP in one go, so can everyone. Okay, with a little bit of effort, everyone can pass CLP. I believe the LPQB is fair. Mm. I believe uh, ETC and BAC have done everything. If you follow through, you will pass. Mm. Don't worry about that. Personally, for you, what do you feel were the pros and cons of this course? Then? Pros and cons of this course. Okay, let's compare it with BPTC. Yeah? Mm. Just to make it uh, very simple. BPTC, you study UK law. Mm. CLP, you study Malaysian law. Purely Malaysian law. So basically, you are now uh, realigning yourself back with the University of Malaya, University of uh, Islam and Parabangsa students. You are now studying Malaysian law. Mm -hmm. So the pros is, you get into practice, uh, you get to chambering, and you get accustomed to it much, much, much faster. Mm -hmm. it's not, I'm not saying that it's impossible, it's impossible for PPTC students to catch up. It's very, it takes uh, you know, a short time for PPTC students to catch up. So the pros is, you catch up very fast. Second is, uh, especially, is makes you a tough, uh, it makes you a stronger person. Mm -hmm. so the second, it makes you a stronger person because you have passed ELP, the so-called hardest exam in Malaysia, so-called hardest exam in Malaysia that you have passed. And the third most uh, prominent pros of doing CLP uh, is you actually learn about uh, the real life cases in Malaysia straight away. Okay, so you won't feel foreign to the cases that are mentioned, the landmark cases. So BPTC students they don't learn about Malaysian law at all. So you know if you mention the case of Sinaya versus Damai Sapir and Sons, they wouldn't know, you know. So that is the benefit of doing CLP. The cons of doing CLP would involve uh, you being accustomed to the practice of swallowing all the information and regurg regurgitating the information. I would say 70% of the time that would be sufficient. You know, but, but sometimes the rest of the time it will, it will fail. So um, it involves too much of memorizing, memorizing work to the point that your advocacy skills is hindered. You know, everyone, everyone can pass the LP because it's only about memorizing. Mm -hmm. You apply it little bit and pass. Mm -hmm. So if you compare it with BPTC, BPTC has a course or a module, if you like to call it a, especially a advocacy module. So you are trained to speak. You are, you are trained to react on your feet with real people and real problems, good problems. So mm. that is where I think BPTC students have the advantage. So yeah. Yes, we will move on to our last and final question then. Uh, yeah. Do you have any advice you'd like to give to aspiring law students or graduates who will soon be taking CLP? My only advice to law students uh, who wants to take up uh, CLP or uh, BPTC is make sure that you really, really want this. Do uh, you really want to be a lawyer? The more that you want to become a lawyer, the easier the process is for you. So it involves hard work, it involves a lot of research, it involves a lot of sometimes even socializing to the point that you know you know who are your friends to study with. You know, you avoid people who are not like minded with you. You avoid people who are not serious about studying law, who are keen and know that the end goal is to become a lawyer. Mm. 
So that would help a lot. And of course, study hard and study smart. <laughs> study smart is more important than study hard, by the way. Mm. It's way more important. Yeah. All right. So that comes to the end of our interview. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. My pleasure.